As you can see, these models are so interesting that even the cat seems to enjoy them. Now we return again one more time to our eclipsed ethane and recall that we had assigned it to the point group D3H. The H tells us that there is a horizontal mirror plane and since it's horizontal, it must be perpendicular to the high order rotation axis. And recall that we had found that the high order rotation axis goes along this particular line here. So you want to model where the horizontal mirror actually will be. And we can do that in this particular model. You see that it breaks in half almost like a shotgun. And you can see the this side and this side look exactly the same. So it breaks directly between the two carbons. So again, these models are to scale, uh, very close to the experimental and the theoretical values. So we get the right idea of the proportions of the molecule. And this is where the horizontal mirror plane would be. So we have a nice way of uh, physically demonstrating where the horizontal mirror is for the eclipsed conformation of ethane, which belongs to point group D3H. Now we can take a look at the uh, staggered conformations of ethane. So recall that we had said that this belongs to the point group D3D. I have not yet built a model to show the C3 high order rotation axis, but we can demonstrate that relatively easily with a Newman projection. So um, we might assume and state that the high order rotation axis for D3D is that particular C3. It turns out that that isn't exactly true. In this particular uh, module, we also have an improper rotation. We have an S6. And since 6 is greater than 3, whenever we have an S6 and a C3, we would say that the highest order rotation axis is actually the S6. To be the highest order rotation axis, it doesn't matter whether it's a proper or an improper rotation. And there are certain molecules for which that distinction will become very important. Uh, for example, there is a molecule that has a C2 and an S4. The fact that it has an S4 makes the high order rotation axis a fourth order rotation. Therefore, remember, if the rotational order is three or greater, then we have the phenomenon of degeneracy. In that case, it's very important that we have an S4. We might think that the C2 is the high order rotation axis, and therefore we do not have degeneracy, but we would be wrong. So it, the, to demonstrate the improper rotations, we will dedicate an entire episode to that. So that will look forward to that in a future episode. But for the time being, let's look at some of the other symmetry operations of this particular class of compounds. So uh, if we look along this skewer here, we actually see, we can demonstrate that it has three C2s. So if we rotate along this particular axis and turn it back, we see that we get exactly what we started with before. So here's what we started with, I'm gonna show this. We're gonna rotate by 180 degrees and we see that we get exactly what we started for. We get a little distortion because of the glue tends to distort the, uh, uh, the poster board a little bit in the process of gluing. But uh, if they were perfectly constructed, you would see that it is perfectly lines up. And we can see exactly where the axes fall. Again, and we have the model built in such a way that we can kind of see through the outer structure and we can actually see